what they did for us, which was really helpful, was they figured out how to package these packs. So I think when you went and you visited him, you saw that he installed these, or he had these installed. So in the Chevy Volt, that metal piece that you see there, that's what holds it to the, to oh, the okay. yeah. That, that's Chevy yeah. there. Right, and so okay. it, in the Chevy Volt, it's in a T shape. The battery's like that. Okay. And all that black uh, item underneath is the, uh, is the support for it. But in the Chevy Volt, it's, it's mounted perpendicular to this. It's up, right? It's not like this. It's just that black piece is the top. It's vertically upwards. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's rolled 90 right. degrees? Right, rolled 90 degrees. Okay. So uh, other builds showed that you can mount it like this, right? This is in the Lotus. This is how they did it. Okay. So there's no uh, orientation. It didn't really matter with that. So that's where we decided, okay, mount it like this. you the Lotus, are you talking the Tesla Roadster? No, it's a, it's on a YouTube video. There was a guy in Canada, in oh, Toronto okay. area, Sasha, one. who built who built that battery pack, but two of them. Okay. And this motor, and built a, and put it in a Lotus. Is Sasha the guy who he basically tracks his car? Yes. Yes. Oh, I have yeah, seen yeah, a yeah. bit of his yeah, videos. Right. Right. Okay. And he's very helpful too. He really was uh, helpful to us. Uh, so and you were in contact with him. Yeah, all these guys. So Damien, I contacted O uh, five seven Technology, Sasha. Uh, you know, everybody's very helpful. So there's probably a handful of builds. The other one that was extremely helpful in our software was a person who built a 911 with a Tesla. Okay. And uh, that was really, really helpful because of code that you'll see when I turn on the display and also I ability to talk to the motor controller and drive the display came from his work, right? Wow. So we adapted what he did. It's, it's, it's called Arduino. So there's an Arduino controller that's talking on the CAN bus to to that uh, motor controller down there. Also on the battery, there's what's called a BMS. It's a battery management system. And in the volt, it measures the voltage of every cell and the temperature of, uh, I think, uh, pairs of them. And you can then pull this data and do things with it, right? In the volt, it would actually bleed batteries. So, so lithium ion batteries, when you charge them with so many cells, they don't, they're not all matched, right? So yep. each of them is gonna charge a little bit more than the other one. So when you start getting to the full pack, they'll start drifting from each other. So you have to do what's called bleeding, where you kind of like, you, you, you bleed off that excess power to let the other ones catch it, right? So that's automatically done in the, in the Volt. In our application, we're not, we don't have that enabled, right? We haven't figured out how to enable that. I think people have since we finished this build. They You're have- talking the, the Volt technology here? Yes, there, the yeah, GM using one? the Volt technology, just, just okay. enabling it or figuring out how to tell it where to, to cap the cap the charge, right? So, what is your BMS in this thing now? Our BMS is really we're monitoring at this point just the cell voltage, right? So, are you still using the GM part? Yeah, still using the GM part. Oh, okay. That's so we the can, part I wasn't yeah. sure about. Let me let me turn it on and show you. So, if you go, oh, wow. so this is the, yeah, this is the display. So this is, you know, the 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 data from. Let me, let me key it on and off again. It's just not exactly. This is there. So you see the pack volts. So that number comes from the BMS from the Chevy Volt. Okay. Okay. Yep. Now, if you touch the top right of the screen, yeah, press that uh, further up. Yeah, right there. There. So what this is doing is reading. There's 96 cells, and it's going through and. Oh, and, and saying what's the max and what's the min and what's the range. Okay. Okay, and that's sort of what I look at when I'm charging it or discharging it. Because the range should be close. You see how close it is? 0 0.008 volts. That's the wow. far right. Yeah. That's, a, that's a good range. When you really start getting discharged, they can go up to 0 0.1 volts apart. And that's when you know you're... So you're once you see that range start increasing, you know yeah. you're either... You know, you're, you're, <laughs> you're on the down cycle of the battery's charge curve. So all right? of this is part of the GM BMS that you guys have integrated The, the data in. is. The data, the data, the, the data is, is okay. there. You can just read the voltages of every cell. Now right. the, the Arduino code is where we're actually ah. reading it, storing it, yep. and then reporting it. So this is a combination of what you see here is an Arduino is behind this that's talking on the CAN bus to this controller, and yep. then it has our code in it which is driving this display board which I think is called 40 systems display okay. and that's what we put in it's, it's kind of glitchy and it's not maybe this hardware it's our software right but it's still f fairly functional where we can you know go out and and uh this is 
an important thing to me. So we're not doing active uh, bleeding or control on the charging. We're just monitoring it. And I oh, think that's okay. typically f for a car like this, which is not a, you know, purpose built. It's not a everyday driver. It's right. fine. It's something that you would have a checklist if you had a race car. You'd be doing so what anyway. What are you going to do if you get a, you know, you're out by three percent? You want to correct that? Can uh, you, you manually bleed off a certain cell? You or something? could, but I mean, at that point, you're you really need to put a BMS in. put a BMS that will actively bleed it, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but now the packs, this is also a testament to the Chevy Volt battery pack, really. Yeah. It came to us very well matched. So yeah. it in its operation or life of how many miles, this might have had already 60,000 miles on it before we acquired it from Salvage Yard, it was still perfectly balanced, right? Yeah, so I mean, uh, balanced, yes. So I think if we just don't, if we don't take it on an excursion too low and let it spread, okay. you know, we'll keep it, we'll keep yeah. it okay. We'll keep its life okay. So it's like when you, you, you'll, on the, on the discharge is where you can get them to spread. And then on the charge, at the top of the charge is where you can start spreading them if you don't have active capping. So we just, we're never discharging it below a certain threshold and we're never charging above a certain threshold. That's our strategy, right? Okay. But others might have a different, you know, others might say, no, you need a BMS. So that's, that's kind of, it's two schools, you know, yes, I'd like a BMS, but at this point, that's another layer to put on. Right. Yeah. And it's and right now you don't need it because your batteries are nicely matched. Right? right. Exactly. Yeah. So we put in, you know, controls to, so we've got the components of the car. I talked a lot about the battery and the motor controller, but the other areas you need are a DC to DC. So what this does is it takes the high voltage from the pack and it converts it into 12 volts DC. Oh, so you don't have a 12 volt battery in here? There's a battery, but you need the battery is what it's charging, right? Okay. So it's using the battery as like the, like the storage medium, right? So, okay. this is uh, from a Chevy Volt. Okay. And so this uh, goes from 300 volts down to 12. Exactly. Right. And behind the passenger seat. That's the that's what charges it, right? So that's the that's a 10 kilowatt uh, Model S charger from a Tesla. Oh, so you're charging right. the, from the wall to the... Yeah, so this is basically, this is the, ah, okay. called a J1772 charge port. Sure. This is where you uh, come from a charger, like what's on the floor over there. Yeah. The AC from that goes into the charger, and then the charger is what converts it from AC into high voltage DC. And that high voltage DC connects through this junction box to the battery. So this technology, like um, Teslas have their own one that you right. can convert to this. But, right. Uh, I mean, this is my leaf connector too. Exactly. And so we so use this because it's the most standard. We could have put a Tesla on it. Right. I mean, if we just lifted it from a Tesla car, it's just, you know, there's, you know, uh, line neutral, ground, right? right? Those are your three. And then two pins for, I think they call it proximity and signal. That's right. that's the, yeah, the that's gist of this need. connector, right? Yeah. Right. And then that has to be wired into the appropriate inputs of the Tesla charger for it to, to function, right? But hmm. this could be, this could be a Tesla charger if we wanted it to be. I mean, the Tesla. Yeah. We're, we're using what's called a, a Tesla tap to convert from the Tesla to a J1772 at this time. But outside, I've got the J1772 chargers that we could use as well, Nate, native without an adapter. Okay. Yeah. So that so that's an important part. Is you know you need you need that right. You need a DC to DC. And okay. you need uh, an AC to DC. Right. And so those are what are behind the seats, those two items. That AC to DC is water cooled, right? Okay. And so we run it on, our cooling loop is one cooling loop for the battery and the, the charger. charger. And then another cooling loop just for the, just for the, uh, just for the motor, right? So the motor's on its own uh, cooling loop. Okay. And the motor, I believe the, the uh, we're using, so in the back, this is for the battery. So they're in series, right? They're just, they're running two uh, coolers in series okay. back here. And then for the, for the motor, the radiator's in the front and the fan's in the front oh, for okay. it. Okay, so you got three radiators in here. Right, and just to get this, the square footage. So, so we you're were just, running the yeah. coolant line through the frame like the stock car does too. Yeah, they are, there it is there coming out. Right. Okay, so that's your. That's what goes to the motor. So the right. cool, yeah, it's just like, I guess, in the Goblin, right? Yeah, it it does the same does thing, that. right? Up and then, you know, that's why we have two reservoirs here, right? Okay. So the one thing is that, you know, the type of coolant needs to be proper so it doesn't have electrical conductivity. 
So when we got it, it had one type, and we changed one of them on the battery loop. But okay. we need to change the coolant on the rest on the motor loop and, and what have you next. Oh, so right? a stock automotive coolant won't no, work No, no, it's not, not the right coolant to I use. Get Tesla coolant yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, or, yeah, or Chevy Volt coolant, you okay. know. So you, <laughs> since it's a combination of, you know, different systems, but uh, it's, yeah. So that's, that's the, the, the coolant has to be looked at. And there's YouTube videos about the coolant. If you put the wrong coolant, you could cause it to gel in the cells and you've destroyed your battery. So that's Ooh. why Tesla says never change your coolant. Don't touch the coolant. Okay. We'll touch the coolant, right? Okay. Yeah, because if you put the wrong stuff in, it will not be good, right? And it's a very small passageway through the, through the cells for the cooling that uh, that's not a good thing. So we talked about the, so the DC to DC is from a Chevy Volt. And you can get them very inexpensive, like $45, but natively it doesn't turn on, right? When you put it in, you need to tell it to turn on. Oh. So that was kind of the effort we had to go through was to find the CAN bus code that says how to switch the thing on. Okay. From my understanding, the Tesla one will turn on automatically, right? So we figured out how to turn it on, but you'll yeah. see this EVTV, they'll sell you this thing for $1,000 with their controller, which is essentially an Arduino sending a signal to say, <laughs> turn on, you know? So you guys yeah. did your own hacking. We, here. Yeah, we, we did that. But again, there's forums online where if you really look, people put the code. Yeah. And so a lot of it is not that we figured it out natively, we figured out how to cut and paste, sure. right? And uh, um, I mean, still that took a lot of effort, but I'm just, it, it, it made it a lot easier. But that searching took a lot of time right and a yep. lot of effort talking to people who were willing to share their knowledge right yeah and uh but by doing so we were able to do something now when we we can recreate this quite quickly but initially it took a lot of uh so do yeah. you um monitor the 12 volt battery and say oh it's getting low and then the arduino says okay send the can bus code to give me power as or? soon as we as soon as i switch that key on it send the code to okay. turn this thing on so just right. give me 12 volts right. all the time just like an alternator right. would right <laughs> And so the problem is it needs a fan, and we we didn't put a fan on it. Oh. So you know, there's a in the display it says DC to DC inverter. That's its temperature. Okay. That one can get too hot if we're not uh, not being careful. So we have to put a fan on it. That's the bottom middle uh, temperature. DC to DC average voltage inverter. Inverter. That one there's the temperature. Right. Twenty five degrees Celsius. Right. Okay. Yeah, everything's in Celsius in terms of temperature we yeah. display. Okay. And then. Uh, um, on the charging, we there's a special board. So this one is native Chevy. Nothing's done to it other than sending it a signal. Okay. In the charger, we use the Damien McGuire. He has a custom board that he built for us, and we put that in. You could see the USB coming off the face of the the charger. Do you see that right angle USB? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I do see it. It's so uh, that yeah, it's down there. so that we have wired from there into the into the bulkhead connector on the display, and then from there we go to our laptop, and then we could. You know, we're working on that right now. At this point, we should get up to 10 kilowatts from it. We're getting half. And Five so there's kilowatts. some number, there's some, okay. is dividing somewhere by two. And it's systematically doing that. Okay. I mean, so like if we have, with this charger, we have 32 amp source AC, it's giving us 16 amps. Out okay. there, we've got 40 amp source, it's giving us 20 amps. So to okay. me, there's a division by two occurring and I just need to figure out how to get that. It's still a work yeah. in progress. Yeah, it's it? still a work in progress. So. You know, once we get that, we'll have much more. It'll, it'll charge faster. The car will charge faster. I, you've got about half the battery, though. The, I'm just wondering. Yeah, but it's still you want to charge. I mean, it, I don't want to. Yeah, I mean, you've had RC cars or things, and yeah. you've run those, and they die, and you want to get back out there. Don't you want it to charge <laughs> fast, right? As fast as you can. Yep. When you think about it, yeah, yeah, you know, it's a smaller battery, but still, you know, I think we always want things to be as fast as they can be, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I need two of those. You could actually put two of them in and charge at 20 kilowatts. That's what some Model S's have. Okay. That's overkill for, for this application, right? But yeah. maybe using this at 10 kilowatts is great. It'll charge it in an hour and a half or hour or something, right? So the other thing that, that we did is, uh, so we talked about those subcomponents, uh, the display, the batteries, the motor. This is kind of the heart of the connections, which is the, uh, high voltage junction box, right? And this is what you'll see people show, and you'll see it in videos, but maybe it hasn't been explained fully, right? It's a little tight to see, but yeah. everybody does it a little bit differently, okay?